So the first message that I am uh, seeing here is they're saying realistic expectation. And I feel this is going to be playing out in the work sector, in your family planning sector. And uh, realistic expectation basically means curbing our sense of um, illusions or delusions and trying to aim for a more practical route, a more practical solution based on where we are right now. It doesn't mean that, you know, we have to let go of our dreams and our aspirations. It basically means um, maybe we're not there yet. It'll come later. But for now, let's focus on the here and now. Looking at what's in front of you and narrowing your scope a little bit so that you're able to solve what's in front of you. And then later on, it's sort of like we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. Breaking up the work, breaking up the worries, breaking up the, the, the problems into more manageable pieces so that you can tackle them rather than letting them overwhelm you. Okay. So realistic expectations, realistic solutions. The second message here, it's uh, actually really, really beautiful. They are saying loving companion. So you have a lot of love, a lot of family support, a lot of people in your midst that you can turn to, that you can, um, you know, seek that emotional um, fulfillment from and it give you a, a lot of emotional support. Friends are out there. People are out there. I feel, though, a lot of the times you are too proud to ask for help. OK, you are, you know, fire signs in general uh, like to be independent. They don't like to um, weave a sob story and, and have other people feel sorry for them. So they're just saying here, there isn't any shame in asking for help. And especially if you've got such amazing people around you, it is really important to, you know, uh, ask for help. OK. Um, I feel like I, I feel like they will be more than happy to assist in any way they can. And I don't feel that you're abusing it or anything like that. So definitely ask for help if you can. The third um, message here, it's emotional maturation. And um, this is a really, really good message across the board for any sign that I read for. Emotional maturation is a process of seeing outside of ourselves, of seeing and anticipating what other people are dealing with, what other people need from us. Is there any way that we can alleviate the suffering the emotional turmoil, the problems of other people, okay? Seeing outside of ourselves, um, kind of um, being a lot more considerate, a lot more thoughtful um, in assisting other people. And it's not just giving assistance, but it's sort of like putting our ego, our needs aside so that we can understand and be in the present moment and have this mutual understanding, this sympathy and empathy and mutual rapport with another human being. Um, so I feel like there's a lot to be said here with that message alone, okay? And I'm going to go back to it. The last message here, uh, nickel and dime. So I feel like financially there's something going on with you guys. And I have been feeling this for the past few months. So we're going to unpack that and we're going to talk about, you know, ways in which you can start to rebuild this financial foundation. So what I have here, realistic expectation, first message. This is showing up in your family planning sector. OK, and uh, what I feel here is um, there is a need here to kind of consult your partner. I feel like for many of you, you're a little bit extravagant when it comes to spending, when it comes to uh, buying things, when it comes to splurging. Um, it's like you're quite lenient with yourself when it comes to spending. OK. And you have somebody that's kind of like controlling the purse strings. It could be a relationship partner. It could be a housemate, a flatmate. It could also be like whoever it is that, you know, you're sharing resources with. And so there's a sense here of needing to consult the other per person before you make big purchases, before you do major decisions. And I'm also feeling at this point, there is a need to want to add additional member into the household, such as getting pregnant, family planning, um, 
adopting a, a dog, adopting a baby, um, taking in elderly parents is what I'm sensing. And these elderly parents can be overseas as well. So I feel like there's this, um, this discussion, this conversation about um, getting more people into the household or the household is getting a little bit too crowded. So why don't we leave the household and seek our, our own space, seek a bigger housing environment or purchase a property outright. So I feel like there's some fluctuation here within the home, but either way, it points towards expansion. It points towards uh, something bigger, something better. Okay. And so financially, you know, whenever we, we want to move to a house or whenever we want to bring another person into our house, household, um, we want the best conditions. And I feel like with you guys, you know, family means so much to you. There's such a, a huge influence in your life and you want to do it big. You want to do it justice. You want to do them justice. And so you tend to be quite generous with the way in which... Um, uh, you want to, you know, uh, give them that financial resources or you you want to to do it big. And I feel like you're the other person that you're sharing resources with. They're trying to tell you to curb your spending. They're trying to tell you to be conservative. And they're trying to tell you more than anything to be realistic. And I feel like the past few months, you know, since the, the November time frame, Many of you had to cut corners, you had to skimp, and you didn't like that. You didn't want to have to do those things. And so it's gotten to the point where you're actually sitting down and you're going to have to, you know, be very realistic here. First of all, with the spending. Second of all, how much am I making right now? How much am I spending? So, you know, the, the, the financial inflow versus the financial outflow, trying to balance that out and trying to not uh, succumb to emotional spending, okay? Um, in the career sector as well, what I do feel is uh, many of you are working in a capacity where you're doing a lot of consultation. So I feel some of you are like... Um, I, I see some people coming to you and they're like, what do you mean by this sentence? What do you mean by this paragraph? What do you mean by this idea? Can you elaborate? They're giving you something, you revise it and you submit it to them. So this can be a manuscript. This can be a transcript. This can be like a, an essay, a, a piece of uh, artwork. Um, you're working on a consultancy basis and you're working on a project basis. And so the financial inflow might not be, you know, like uh, consistent. It, it doesn't feel to me like a regular nine to five work. It seems to me like contract work. It seems to me like um, you're getting paid on a contract basis. Um, but either way, I feel like you enjoy the work that you do. You're getting positive recognition. And I feel many of you are at a point where your career is just, you know, just, just, just starting to take off. And in about 10 months time, it's going to take off. It's like you're, you're preparing things right now. Um, right now where you are, it's a little bit of a launching pad. Okay. Like a stepping stone. You're taking these, um, minute steps and then you're going to take off. But I do feel it's going to be in about 10 months time before you finally make it, before you finally launch, before you finally start to make the type of money that you're hoping for. So right now, be conservative, be realistic and have these realistic expectations. OK, um, you know, the whole process about skimping, it's its not fun. It's, it's definitely not fun when we have to really watch what we're doing and we have to be, you know, really conscious of it. I'm also sensing many of you are in the public eye for whatever uh, reason. And a lot of Leos actually are politicians, um, are, are great teachers as well, orators, lecturers, and things like that. So I'm not surprised that you're in the public eye and you have really strong, you know, charisma and stage presence. So if you are in the public eye, you're also being extra careful about what you're doing and how you're being perceived and how other people, um, you know, per, how you are portrayed 
in through even social media, even through, you know, newsprint. So I feel like you're trying to curate this um, persona so that you can, you know, maintain that good role model um, persona so that you can, you know, be a positive influence for other people. So I feel like a little bit of management when it comes to how you portray yourself, how you want other people to portray you or to think of you. Okay. So a little bit of like, um, um, reputation management, um, not in a bad way at all, but I definitely feel, um, you're erring on the side of caution when it comes to your image, when it comes to your spending, and when it comes to being very realistic about what is expected of you, what you can and cannot do, and being very honest about, um, I, I want to say, portraying that to other people. Um, second message, loving, um, they're saying as well, loving partner, but they say the, the first message is loving companion, uh, in partnerships, in partnerships though, I feel like many of you are blessed with a very, very emotionally stable partner. And what's really interesting to me is, um, um, a lot of the times, you know, um, so, so Leo to me, the sign of Leo, it's, it's very dramatic. Okay. It's a fire sign, but it's also ruled by the sun. And I feel like, you know, you thrive in the, the spotlight and you guys would make you and Libras are great, 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 great actors. Um, you like to, you know, um, stand up for your beliefs and stand up for the underdog and really, um, you're, you're quite militant when it comes to the things that you believe in, your ideologies, your sense of justice and your sense of right and wrong and your moral compass. You're very, 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 um, apt about defending what you feel is right. Okay. But I also feel like there is a sense of spectacle and, tr and drama associated with the things that you like to do. You like high intensity. And so naturally, I see a lot of Leo people naturally attracted to a partner that is a little bit um, milder, a little bit more distant, a little bit more emotionally controlled. And uh, I feel like you're naturally drawn to these people because of differences. But you're also drawn to them because I feel like they they make you feel stable when you're interacting with them. They can calm you down. They help to really, really mellow, mellow you out. And they, because they're so calm and so cool and collected, they're naturally drawn to your energy. They're naturally drawn to that sense of drama and passion. And there's just immense chemistry. So you have a partner here that is very, very like... Um, it's like, it's, it's like a calm lake. Okay. Someone who's really, 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 really calm and they're great under pressure and they never, uh, act out of character. They never break that facade, which I think is really admirable. So you have a partner here that is, um, kind of self and, um, it, it, someone who's like, I don't want to say in, um, indulging you because that sounds so patronizing but I don't feel like it has any negative connotation so for example I see you guys excitedly you know coming home and you have this latest project this latest idea that you want to implement and you're like you know talking a mile a minute uh, excitedly gesturing and telling your partner about everything that you experience and what you're planning to do. And I see your partner sitting there kind of smiling with a little bit of a smirk um, because they're amused. They're amused by how excitable you can get. They're amused by how passionate you can be. And they're amused by how, you know, totally immersed you are when you are passionate about something. I feel like that's why they're really, really drawn towards you guys. And you know how when you watch children, um, when they're really, really immersed in something, they're like so happy. They're, they're just so pure and just all you see is this ball of joy. And that's what it feels like to your partner when they're observing you do something. They're just amazed by how 
I want to say single minded you can be when you are really, really passionate about something. And so you've got a partner that is really emotionally supportive. You've got a partner that is, um, it's like they're, they're willing to go above and beyond just to capture that moment, just to, you know, sustain or recreate or to maintain that moment so that you can be so happy. Okay. Like they, they love seeing that in you and they're willing to jump through hoops to make it happen, just to realize your dreams, just to make you constantly that happy. Uh, for many of you, I feel here, you have a water sign, a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is a person that is really, really, really grounded. Uh, they love you, they support you, and they don't feel threatened at all by your achievement. So, you know, uh, needless to say, I, I just feel like a good partner should never feel threatened. A good partner should always emotionally support us from behind the scenes if they need to, okay? But some couples, it's really difficult for them to share the spotlight. But I feel with your relationship partner, you've got somebody that is really, really, really willing to get their hands dirty, willing to like, you know, um, make it through with you, willing to, you know, go through thick and thin with you. So you've got somebody who is really amazing by your side. For others of you, um, I feel here uh, a, an earth sign, okay? So a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. And um, I'm sensing like, so, so if it's an earth sign, the tendency is like this. You give them all these ideas and rather than just being quiet, they're going to say like, okay, you can do this, but you're going to need to change these things. So it feels a little bit like they're poking holes in your theory and you're going to feel like, uh-huh, uh-huh, but you know, I'm, this is just the the preliminary stages. I'm, I'm just thinking about is this right now, and this is not the final product. And so you're getting a little bit defensive. But this person, you know, the, the way that earth signs operate, they show they care by listening to you and giving feedback. That's just the way they are programmed, and that's just the way they operate. And... Um, they're not like the water sign where they can sit there and, you know, support you from behind the scenes or, you know, do anything that you help them. But the, the earth signs, if you need their help, you know 100% they will be there, even if they don't agree with you, even if they feel like uh, this is like um, this is like a pipe dream. It's never going to come together. If you need their help and if they can be of assistance in any way, you know they're going to be there. You know they're going to be the one passing out the flyers. You know they're going to be, you know, up at 3 a.m. with you drawing, um, making posters, painting murals, and things like that. So people show their love in different ways. People show their support in different ways. And so just because one person is like listening and they're not doing the actions like the water sign uh, doesn't mean they don't love you. And just because, you know, the other person is like poking holes in your theory, like the earth sign, they're a little bit more critical and they, they, they need to make sure that you're, you know what you're getting yourself into just because they care. That's just the way they care. It doesn't really... Um, diminish the love and the support okay and honestly if these two people or two signs didn't care they wouldn't be around okay so I feel like you're you might be doubting it or you might be going through a situation where you're frustrated and you know we get frustrated with our partners all the time but during mercury and retrograde the energy is really volatile, so it is important for us to really put ourselves in other people's shoes and especially learn to put ourselves in our loved one's shoes and see how they feel about us and see how they're trying to show they care through the ways that they can support you or the, the things that they can help you with, okay? So 
I feel like you've got someone who's really loving by your side. Companionship as well. Friendship, family, um, relationships. You guys have a lot of support. I do see this um, unconditional love coming from siblings. So for those of you who are fortunate enough to have siblings, there's this outpouring of love. They're babysitting you. They're watching the kids. They're cooking for the kids. They're taking the, the nieces and the nephews out while you're studying, while you're taking exams, while you're working overtime. So props to those siblings, okay? I, I feel like the, the relationship, the sibling relationship, there is so much love here and I feel like it's going to make you, it's just going to make, give you that sense of appreciation that somebody is willing to, you know, go above and beyond to assist you. So you've got a lot of support uh, coming in this month, Leo. There is no reason for you to feel isolated and to feel like, oh, they don't really love me. I'm going to wait for them to reach out. Don't get into that habit of only seeing things from your point of view and not accepting the way that other people show they love you, okay? Uh, third message here, emotional maturation. So the emotional maturation message goes hand in hand with everything that I talked about before, the two messages that comes before. Um, you're at a point where recently, as of, um, I'm seeing the time of Scorpio last year. So November uh, 2017, things were a little bit rough for you. So I feel like there was a major disappointment here. There were major obstacles and major setbacks. I feel it playing out in your um, career sector. And I'm feeling it playing out, first of all, let me see, education sector, higher education, okay? I'm also seeing it play out with in-laws. So higher education, in-laws, and that rules the ninth house. Um, so whatever the setback is, you overcame it. And it left you feeling very jaded and very emotionally distraught. If it happened with in-laws, you feel like, I don't know how they feel about me. I don't know if they like me. I don't know if I like them. So I feel that. If it happened in the higher education sector, I feel like you, you feel disillusioned. You feel like, is this the right field? Am I going to be able to get a good job? I've spent... Uh, invested so much time am I going to be able to you know um, am I still in love with the the work am I still in love with the profession am I still in love with the subject matter to be doing it for the rest of my life so you have some major dilemmas or even major like turning points in your life when it came to your career and also uh, education okay and when it comes to the career sector it's almost like you had to, I, I'm seeing here, um, the work itself shouldn't be physically taxing, but it was very physically taxing. I see you traveling distances, like huge distances. I'm seeing you operating or working on uneven terrain in areas that are like, you know, it's like you have to be the one to create that trail. It's like you're in a, a virgin land and there isn't a, um, a trail that's already created for you. So you have to blaze that trail. I'm also seeing you carrying a lot of heavy equipment, uh, living in quite, you know, difficult circumstances, uh, camping out, uh, not having access to, you know, clean and comfortable uh, sleeping arrangements. So it, it's kind of physically um, difficult, okay? Like uh, it's physically taxing, it's um, exhausting. So I feel like you were really challenged. And that, all of it, you know, you, you overcame it. It made you a lot stronger, honestly. It made you a lot more, I feel like rough around the edges. Um, but it, it made you a lot stronger, so the emotional maturation basically means, um, I feel like it can go of one of two ways. Because you've been through all of this, through all this hardship, and you came out okay, I feel like you can come out a little bit jaded. And so when people are whining, you know, about, oh, my TV's not working, or like, um, my water got shut off for two hours this morning, 
you're just like, I can't really sympathize. You know, I had to sleep on the floor for three months. I had to like um, sleep in a tent with mud underneath me and the rain just pouring on me. You know, things like that. You, you've endured your share of hardship and now people are telling you about very mundane problems and you're brushing it off because you can no longer relate. And I feel like that is a little bit of um, a negative way of, of um, incorporating this emotional maturation process, okay? So it's important for us to be appreciative of what we have. And so definitely it's annoying when these people are coming to you and they're whining about things that don't really matter. But it is also really, really important for us not to look down at people and to meet people where they're at. So obviously, whoever that's coming to you, they're kind of spoiled. They're kind of, you know, they haven't really endured hardship, okay? Quote, unquote, hardship. But it doesn't mean that you can just brush them aside and it doesn't mean that they don't have their own issues, okay? But I feel like you're distancing yourself from those types of people. You're distancing yourself from the, the really privileged uh, types of people who are whining about really mundane things. I, I do see emotional detachment coming in for you. And then for others of you, um, because of this emotional maturation process, because of everything, the hardship that you've had to go through since the November time frame last year, uh, you're coming out on top. You're coming out a bigger, uh, a better and a stronger person. You're becoming a little bit more, uh, well, a lot more considerate. And you're, I almost feel like you want to share your expertise, you want to share your skills, you want to share your best practices with other people. And I feel like you're doing this um, kind of like of your own volition. So you're seeing somebody struggling and you're like, hey, I was, you know, going through that last year. Let me give this peop these people a few pointers. And then I see you put in a position where you're teaching them, you're guiding them, or you're giving them, um, you know, pointers as to what they need to do okay so it's it's actually a really beautiful process because you're sharing your knowledge and you're sharing it in a way where you intuitively know it's going to help them they're going to be where you were last year they're going to be in that same spot and uh, whatever pointers you can give them to really help ease and facilitate that process for them that's what you're going to do um so you know um if people are whining about mundane things, just let them whine. Don't let it get to you, okay? Um, and then whatever capacity you can help people, definitely do so. Um, the final message that I'm going to leave you guys with here is nickel and dime. And the nickel and dime isn't so much about um, being bankrupt or being, you know, uh, destitute. It's more about foregoing um, immediate pleasures for long-term gain, okay? So you're really, 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 really thinking about, I feel many of you, uh, the way that you're thinking about money is definitely going to change for the next 10 months. And um, the way in which you, I, I feel like your, your, your framework regarding money, money as a means to an end and not an end in itself. And I know that sounds really cliche, but it needs to be said because I feel like there was a lot of money wasted, a lot of money wasted for the past three years. And I feel like some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, money that came really fast, they left your hands really fast. And um, I also feel as well, um, let me see. Money that you thought was going to be around forever and ever and ever. Money that it's like a uh, un un um, it's like a bottomless well. Okay, you need it. It's there. You need it. It's there. Or the the work situation was so prosperous. Uh, you worked and there's that paycheck, but something happened, and then the the supply of money or the consistency just wasn't it's no longer here anymore and so you're really really thinking about 
the building blocks for your future wealth and prosperity. You're nickel and diming yourself. You're being very, very cautious about spending. You're being a lot more responsible. And you're obsessively, you know, checking the bank accounts. Um, some of you are waiting for sources of funding to come in. And it's getting delayed. Okay? And so it's not a good place to be when we count on something and it's not there. But I feel like it's going to clear up for you. Uh, let me see. One, two, three, four. I want to say like five months, uh, five weeks time. Five weeks time might take us into the May time frame. Okay, so May. Um, I'm also sensing as well. Um, it's just like the, the financial situation is a little bit unstable right now. Um, keep trucking on. Keep saving. And I know it's not fun to, you know, have to nickel and dime ourselves and to have to, you know, be super, super conservative. And I feel like the only danger for you guys is you have to do it for so many months before you're just like F it. And then you splurge and then you go through, you know, periods of like intense spending. So please be careful about that. Um, home renovation. That's in, in order. It's going to be wonderful. It's looking really good. Um, I also feel as well, uh, they're saying here, um, you know, they, they keep saying, your siblings, you've got amazing siblings, okay? Um, whatever you think they feel about you, yes, they think you're stubborn. Yes, they think like, oh my gosh, you are such a, um, um, like, they're, they're, they're like a, a bull, like um, someone who's extremely stubborn, extremely bullish in their ways, or, you know, just like, um, they, they won't listen. So it's like you, you've got your opinions made, you've got your, your ideas fixed, right? And no matter what they do, they can't persuade you. Yes, they think of all these things about you, but they do really love you as well. So don't make the process difficult. Don't do that to the people that you love. And they love you. So no matter how much you guys argue, there's still a lot of love there. So approach it with a little bit of compassion. Okay? And be, I want to say, be a little bit more flexible. Um, there is some really big karma here about money. And uh, I feel like until your framework about money changes... And I can tell you till you know, I'm blue in the face. Money is a means to an end. Until that uh, light bulb kind of, you know, switches on in your head, until you truly, truly, truly understand what that means. The financial prosperity that I mentioned coming in the um, October time frame, it's going to be delayed. So until you really grasp that lesson. So what exactly does that mean? I feel like you're going to spend... From now until the May time frame, trying to figure this out. And once you figure it out, lesson learned, there's going to be huge prosperity coming in the later part of the year. Okay? Um, you have some really important things that needs to be worked through and needs to be experienced uh, during this Mercury retrograde cycle. So... I'm sensing here that, you know, um, learning to get your financial affairs in order, having a game plan for yourself, start saving and start uh, rethinking about, you know, how, how you see money and how you think about financial um, foundation and financial, you know, um, financial prosperity. That's going to be really important. Okay. So Leo's, I wish you all the best.